Amen and amen. Well, you can be seated tonight. It's such an honor to be here. I tell you, I have to tell on Pastor Chuck for just a little bit. First of all, this is a really tall pulpit. Is it always this tall or did you raise it just for me? That's what I want to know. Can y'all see me? I got, I got one that's about a foot shorter, so I don't know where he got this one. But, but as long as you can see me, I might spend some time to the side okay, tonight. Is that all right? I can't even begin to tell you what an honor it is to be here, to preach in this church, to be with Pastor Chuck and Pastor Karen. I can't even begin to tell you what an honor it is. I, um, about four years ago, I walked into a service with Pastor Dale Gentry here. Uh, Pastor Chuck and I were acquaintances, but we didn't know each other that well. And he invited me back to the house. And uh, I went, and I went to his house. And at that time, he had a room that he called the Florida Room, where I saw a bunch of heads on the walls. And I thought to myself, man, you don't mess with this guy. You know what I mean? You just don't mess with him. And uh, we talked for hours that night. Somebody fed us some chicken salad that I'll never forget. I don't like chicken salad, but that chicken salad that night would make a tadpole slap a whale. You understand? I thought, that's the best stuff I put in my mouth. That was phenomenal. But when I left there, I went home. And uh, I, I talked to my wife, and I said, Honey, I feel like we need to be a part of destiny. We need Pastor Chuck, or we need Pastor Karen in our lives. I needed a brother. I needed one, and I found one. And I am forever grateful. He is what I call a friend, a brother. He is somebody that will be there with me in good times and bad. And so I'm so ever, forever grateful. He comes and preaches for me every year. Now listen, he preaches the paint off the walls. You guys have one of America's great preachers in New Harvest. Can we get an amen to that? I'm telling you right now. So he's just phenomenal, and I'm so grateful. Grateful to be here tonight. Grateful to have Pastor David. Good to see you tonight, my friend. And so I want to share tonight. Is that all right? I got to tell you a little bit about myself. I, I grew up in Palm Beach County. I was born and raised in Palm Beach County. I'm one of the few and the proud, all right? and one of the last that actually still live there. So I was born and raised in Palm Beach County. I left Palm Beach County in 1994 to go live in a small town, a town called Williston. Anybody ever heard of it? No, I didn't think so. And then then I moved to another town called Chiefland. So I spent 11 years of my life in a small town. And I've come to find out you can get anywhere in the world in a small town. I'll try that one more time. I said you can get anywhere, anywhere in the world in a small town. And God can do anything with you, through you, and to you in a small town. Somebody say amen. Now, I'm going to say, like Pastor Chuck said at my church one time, I brought some amens with me in my pocket. If I need to, I'll pull them out myself. But if you guys would help me tonight, that would be great. So I found out a lot of things about small towns. Spent great years in a small town. Met some lifelong friends in a small town. Still have great relationships in that small town. And so I'm so grateful to be over here tonight knowing that I can preach in a place where you can get anywhere in the world. Amen. And I want to talk to you tonight about what God is going to do, not just in your life, but I believe I have something to say to New Harvest Church tonight. And so I believe I do have a word from God. I want you to turn, if you would, tonight to 1 Samuel chapter number 3. 1 Samuel chapter number 3, and I want to preach a message to you tonight called Finding a Second Wind. Finding a Second Wind. Now, I've been doing this for a little while, and I've 
to see in the church Christians who I believe, listen to this, are tired. It's just what I see. It's just what I observe. You may not recognize it, and it just may be my, my, my church or people that I'm associated with, but I just talk to people, and I just find people are tired. They're just tired. They go to bed tired. They wake up tired. Come on now. They go to work tired. They come home from work tired. They go on vacation tired. They come home from vacation tired. They need a vacation from the... Come on now. They need a vacation from the vacation. They're just wore out. But I recognize that there is a place where you can find a second wind. Hallelujah. I said you can find a second wind. So I want to talk to you about that tonight. And I believe I want to pray for people and I just believe God's going to speak. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Amen. I said I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. And I grew up in church so I could say Holy Ghost because I grew up in church, in pews, in Sunday school. Hallelujah. And I remember when I was in Sunday school that I would be taught the lesson of this boy whose name was Samuel. And I had little picture books growing up. Listen, I've loved church all my life. And we went to church every week. I said, y'all don't understand that. We went to church every week. In fact, we went to church three times a week. I could never miss church. Anybody with me? I mean, I could never miss church. The only time I could miss church is if I was sick. And to prove that I was sick, was sick, I'd have to throw up. And then once I threw up, my dad would say, well, you should be feeling better now. Go on and get dressed. Come on to church. I'm talking about we went to church on vacation. Anybody ever went to church on vacation? Ten-year-old boy at the beach had to bring a little suit with me, a little suit, little three-button uh, you know, vest and everything, a little suit. Had to bring that on vacation, say goodbye to the pool and the beach because we were going to find church somewhere. And we did that every year. We were in church all the time. And I grew up listening to the stories of the heroes of the faith and, and all of the Sunday school lessons that I learned as a kid. And I remember having these books, and I would learn about some of the heroes of the faith. But one book I remember above all else is this book on the boy named Samuel. Samuel's mother was a woman by the name of Hannah. Hannah was unable to give birth. She was barren, and she prayed a prayer, an incredible prayer. It was a dangerous prayer, but she said this, Lord, if you would give me a child, I'll give him back to you. I will lend him to you. I will give him to you. I'll dedicate him to you. All the days of, of his life, he shall be yours. And Hannah bore a son, and she named him Samuel. And at the appropriate time, she brought Samuel to the house of God, to the temple, to serve the priest whose name was Eli. And so we pick up the story in 1 Samuel chapter 3, starting in verse number 1. And it says, Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days, and there was no widespread, widespread revelation. And it came to pass at that time while Eli was lying down in his place, and when his eyes had begun to grow so dim that he could not see, and before the lamp of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord where the ark of God was, and while Samuel was lying down, listen to verse 4, that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here I am. So he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Now this particular instance would be repeated several times over. Eli would listen to this boy come into his chamber saying, you called me. And Eli finally understood that it was the Lord that was calling Samuel. And I read this story and I ask myself this question. Listen to this. Why Samuel? Why? There was no widespread revelation, the Bible says. In other words, God was not speaking, but he chose this young man, this boy. Why him? Now, it would be obvious to say that they chose Samuel because he was in the temple. He was at the right place at the right time. And I believe that would be correct. Absolutely, he was in the right place at the right time. You say, well, maybe he chose Samuel because 
Samuel serve. He was serving the Lord. He was the only one at that time, that boy in the temple serving. And so he was the obvious choice. And I would say, yes, that, that could be true as well. He was in the right place. He was doing the right thing at the right time, serving the Lord. But I see something, one word. One word in these five scriptures that stands out to me above any other word. And that is found in verse number five. It says, so he ran. I said he ran. I said Samuel ran. Now listen, let's break it down. I said in the middle of the night, stage three, ram sleep. Come on now. Been working all day. Tired, could not wait to get to bed. In the middle of the night, he hears what he believes is his master. And out of a dead, cold sleep, he gets up and he runs. I said he runs. Ooh, that caught me one day. Listen, I, I'm, I'm a light sleeper. Anybody light sleepers? We got any light sleepers? I sleep one eye open. That's just the way I sleep. I need complete silence. I hear one thing, eyes are open. I mean, they're open. I hear the slightest little noise in my house, and I just open my eyes, and I say, Cynthia. Talk to my wife. Cynthia, did you hear that? I think somebody's in the house. Go check that out. Let me know. Come back and let me know if anybody's there. <laughs> I says, baby, somebody broke in. I hear every little noise, every little noise. That's just me. Now, I don't know if Samuel was a light sleeper. I don't know if he was in a deep sleep. I don't know if he was one of those people that you had to slap them silly to get them up. But I know this. In the middle of the night, while he's asleep, he didn't get up and stroll. He didn't get up and walk. He didn't get up and shuffle his feet. Listen to me now. In the middle of the night, he got up and ran. I said, he ran. And I looked at it, and I said, you know what? I see it. Not just in Samuel. I see it all over the Bible. I see it out of person after person after person. Abraham ran. Joshua ran. David ran. Come on. You could go through the Bible and you look at these runners. Elijah ran. And then you go into the New Testament and you see that Peter ran. Oh, and you see that Philip ran. And you see that Mary ran. And you see that Paul ran. And Paul talked about running all the time. He said, I've run my race. I've run my race. He said, listen, I forget those things that are behind. I press. In other words, I run. I run forward. I run forward. And he said, listen, not only that, in 1 Corinthians, he said, listen, if you're going to run, run to win. Hallelujah. Run to win. And I look at it and I go, listen, the Bible says that God is looking for runners. I just believe it. I see it from cover to cover. God is not looking for those who is out sightseeing. God's not looking for those who are just taking a walk. God's not looking for those who are just on a little Sunday stroll. I think God is up in heaven going, where are my runners at? I need some runners to run with vision. I need some runners to run with power. I need some runners to run with my presence. Listen, I'm not just looking for someone that's going to meander through life. I need somebody to run. I need somebody to take off. I need somebody that'll move. I need somebody that'll pick up the pace. Hallelujah. And I believe we were built that way. I believe we were made that way to pick up the pace. I can't handle people that go too slow. I just can't do it. I just don't have it in me. I look and I see in the Bible, I said, give me somebody who can run. Give me somebody who can move because I believe that the day and the hour that we're living in, it's not time to ponder. It's not time to hesitate. Listen, it's time to move. It's time to accelerate. It's time to move forward in this hour. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, some of you think, well, Pastor, I'm tired, though. Oh, listen, we're going to talk about that tonight. 
Because you may not think it, you may not know it, you may think that you're maxed out, but I'm here to tell you that there's another gear. I said, I've come to New Harvest Church to tell somebody that they may think that they've maxed out, but there is another gear, and they need to put their foot on the clutch and shift into another gear and begin to accelerate the pace. Hallelujah. I was driving one time. A girl. Confession. In a Ford Fiesta. Come on, somebody. I think it was like a 1986 Ford Fiesta stick shift. I didn't drive stick shifts much. I know how to drive a stick shift, but I'd, it's like one of my first times in a stick shift. So I was driving, and I just got a new cassette tape. If you don't know what that is, Google it. You'll figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Anybody remember cassette tapes? I had some cassette tapes. And so I had a, a new cassette tape of a band named Petra. Where, any, of the 80s, any, of my, any of my 80s people out there? Come on now. Petra had just come out with an album called This Means War, and I was so excited to play it, and I was taking her home just thinking that I was it, you know what I'm saying, my Ford Fiesta. I think it was yellow. Anyway, so, so I'm driving in this Ford Fiesta, and I, the first song that came on, and the first song was This Means War, and I mean, I cranked it. I had it as loud as it could go, and I had shifted from first gear to second gear. And I mean, I'm listening to the tunes, and it's Petra, and I'm going, it's as loud as it could possibly go, and I'm just talking to her, and I'm moving, and I'm trying to just speed up, and I'm speeding up and speeding up, and she says to me, don't you need to shift? <laughs> and I look down at my speedometer, not paying attention, and, and the tack meter I mean, I had redlined that car. I was going like 60 miles an hour in second gear. The thing was crying. It was begging, somebody get this amateur out of the driver's seat and show somebody how to shift gears. And so when I shifted gears, I was able to continue to move at a more rapid pace. Listen, if you think you've maxed out, if you think that you can't do anymore, if you think that I've given about all that I could give, listen, I'm here to tell you that there is another gear. Listen, you just put your foot on the clutch and say, yeah, come on now. We're going to shift through the gears. God's got more for me. Somebody say amen. He really does. He's got more for you. There is another gear. You can do it. You just need to find a second wind. A second wind. Hallelujah. Let me tell you why we run. I want to give you some reasons why we run. Listen, we run, number one, because the runners who were before us are cheering us on. I run because I'm surrounded. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 says, I'm surrounded. I'm surrounded. Listen to me. I'm surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. And they are cheering me on. That means that my life is like in a stadium that is full of people. And I will not look to the north part of that stadium. They all are cheering for me. They're saying, you could do it. You could make it. Come on. And I look to the south end of the stadium, and I just see that it's packed bleacher after bleacher, row after row, section after section. And guess what? They're all cheering me on too. They got signs with my name on it saying, you could do it. You can make it. Come on. Run. Run. Pick up the pace. Run. Accelerate. You could do it. And I look to the east part of the stadium, and I look to the west part of the stadium, and I think to myself, man, everybody in this place is cheering me on. There's nobody rooting for anybody but me. Listen, I'm here to tell you, you've got home field advantage over the devil. Everybody is cheering you on. You need to pick up the pace. Hallelujah. Everybody's cheering you on. The Bible says we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses and they are cheering you on. So if everyone is cheering your name, why would you just stand there? I said, if everyone's cheering your name, if the whole stadium is pushing you forward, why would you just stand there? I, lived, I wasn't built that way. I just, I just, it's not in my DNA to sit still. 
I just, I just have it in me. I have to keep moving. That's just me. Listen, I vacation like a madman. I vacation like a madman. All right? My wife, she vacations totally different from me. All right? She does this thing called resting. She goes on vacation to rest. It's a foreign concept to me. I don't understand it. I said, baby, we're on vacation. She said, I know. And I'm going to sleep in. I'm like, listen, it's 10 o'clock in the morning. The day's half over. We got to get going. We got to get moving. If I'm going to the theme park, listen, I'm the first one there. Come on now. Anybody with me on that? I'm the first one in that theme park, and I want to be the last one to leave. And don't let me purchase a meal plan. Oh, no, don't even let me. Don't even let me get a meal plan. I will get my money out of that meal plan. Because vacations are for doing. Come on now. They're not for resting. They are for doing. I got a few people on that one. Just a few. A couple people with me. I took my, my seven-year-old son on vacation. My wife and my two older children went on a mission trip to Honduras. And I said, all right. My son's name is Elias, and he's seven years old. And listen, this is all boy. I'm talking about all boy. If he can break it, climb it, destroy it, ride on it, he's going to do it. And I said, baby, we're going on vacation. We had five days, five days to go on vacation. In those five days, we went from Sanibel to Clearwater Beach to Bush Gardens to Gainesville, to St. Augustine, to Ocala, to Miami. We did all of that in five days. I didn't have my wife with me. Oh, we were going. Come on now. We were just going. I wore him slap out. You understand? I wore him out. By the end of it, he was just dizzy. He didn't know where we were, what we were doing. I'm like, baby, you got to keep up. This is what vacation is about. It's about doing. Sun up to sun down. We were gone. Leaving the hotel at 8 o'clock in the morning, unheard of. It's just unheard of. Listen, that's just who I am. It's just, I got I to gotta be moving. And I think that's the way you're built too in the kingdom. God wants to see activity. God wants to see movement. Listen to me, you were built to run. I said you were built to run. Listen, another reason why we run is because our time is limited. It's just limited. I'm 47 right now, and I feel like I'm just now hitting the midway mark. Just about midway, right? I'm just about catching my stride. I'm thinking, okay, now this is, this is the time not to slow down. This is the time when I really pick up the pace. Come on, now this is the time. Listen, I've wasted too much time. And wasted time is wasted life. Oh, I hope every teenager gets me on this one. I hope everyone listens to me. Listen to me, young people. Wasted time is wasted life. And you are limited. Don't think that life lasts forever. We only get one time around this thing. Listen, we just got one shot at it. I've seen too many people waste their 20s. I've seen too many people waste their teens. I've seen too many people waste their 30s. And they let decades slip by. Decades slip by until they try to figure out what God wants to do with their life. Listen, you start at the youngest age you can, and you say, I'm getting in as fast as I can get in. I'm going to run right now. I'm not going to wait till I'm 30. I'm not going to wait till I'm 40. I'm not going to wait till I'm married. Time is limited. It's limited. And stop worrying about what didn't happen. Did you hear me now? We spend too much time worrying about what didn't happen. We spent too much time worrying about the opportunities that we didn't get, the doors that didn't open. Listen, you can't get forward by, by looking back. You've got to understand, hey, listen, uh, if you run forward, listen to me, you automatically leave the past behind. I said if you run forward, you automatically leave the past behind. If you run towards your destiny, you run away from your history. I said if you run towards your destiny, you run away from your history. 
So it's limited time. It's limited time. Now is the time to do it. The devil will tell you, oh, you got to do it when you get married. Then you'll be more stable. Oh, you got to do it when you have kids. Oh, you got to do it when you buy the house. Oh, you got to do it when you remodel. Oh, listen, all of that can wait. I'm telling you, it can't wait. You've got to do it now. Amen. Run. Listen, now, I want to spend a little time on this third one. Because the third reason we run is because a second wind comes to those who are running, not to those who stop. I said the second wind only comes to those who are running, not to those who stop. Now, I want to do something tonight that may get me in trouble. I pray that it won't. Your pastor will correct me. He's my brother, my older brother, but he is my brother. All right. I've seen the Florida room with all the heads. I know not only can he beat me up, he can kill me very, very quickly. But I got to say something tonight, and if I'm wrong, if it's theologically inaccurate, he'll come back, he'll correct it. But I want to kill a sacred cow. Can I do that? I want to kill one of those belief systems that gets perpetuated from generation to generation that I begin to look at, and I begin, you know, I don't think that's true. Because I found out sacred cows... Make great hamburgers. So let's get rid of the sacred cow. Let's kill the sacred cow tonight. And the sacred cow that I have to talk about is this thing called burnt out. Mmm. No, no, no. Burnt out. If I hear it one more time from somebody saying, well, I just don't want to burn out. If you could burn out, listen, I'd have been burnt out a long time ago because I have tried it. I have done everything wrong in that particular area. I'm talking about I've got some stories now. And one of the reasons I love your pastor is because his stories are way worse than my stories. I listen to his stories to feel better about myself and the things that I've been through. So when I get around Pastor Chuck and I hear his stories, I think, my God, how has that man survived this long? So if anybody's going to be burnt out, listen, he'd have burnt out a long time ago because he has got some stories. So I was talking to a young man one time, and he began to talk to me about the danger that he was experiencing and the feelings that he had about being burnt out at age 22. And I said, now listen, if you're burnt out of ministry at 22, ministry is not for you. No, 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 it's not for you. Because I just don't know. And the things that he was describing to me, I thought, you know what, I don't think that's burnt out. You know what I think that is? I think that's discouragement. That's all that is. It's not burnt out. It's discouragement. He began to describe to me how he's feeling and all these fears that he had. And he didn't want to burn out. And he didn't want to do too much. I don't want to do too much. Oh, listen, I, can, I don't want to bite off more than I could chew. I hate that statement too. And so I, he just said, I don't, want to, I don't want to burn out. And, you know, I'm just afraid. I got I to gotta back off of some things. And, and so he began to describe that. I said, you know what? That sounds like discouragement. And listen, discouragement you push through. Listen, discouragement you don't give in to. Discouragement will tell you, yeah, you've got to back off because the devil plays tricks on our mind. He begins to tell us, oh, you're doing too much. You need some time off. You need to just take that ministry that you got. You need to set that thing aside for about a year. And listen, a year turns into five years, and five years turns into ten years. Listen, I talked to one person who took a year off from being married. That was 30 years ago. She took a year off of ministry. That's 30 years ago. I thought, have you figured it out? by now are you ready to jump back in see listen I think we just need to push through some of that discouragement I think we need to push through and endure and just say you know what I'm going to push through I believe that God is able to sustain me I believe that God is able to to give me the strength I trust the Holy Ghost that the Holy Ghost is just going to come on the inside of me and listen not only can I not get discouraged not only can I press through I can actually pick up the pace I can actually accelerate I can actually move forward come on listen I need to hear that in New Harvest Church there's people who are ready to run ready to run the devil tells you oh you're gonna 
you're going to be burnt out. Burnt out. Now listen, I believe in taking days off. You need a day off. Every Monday, my wife and I have what's called Best Friend Day. And I tell my leadership team and, and our, 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 all of our leadership, I said, don't text me. Don't, don't call me. I put a voicemail on that says, I'm not answering the phone. I'm not calling anybody back. It's Best Friend Day. Now, Best Friend Day dies every summer. It dies. But it gets resurrected. So it was just raised from the dead recently. Hallelujah. So Best Friend Day is back. Somebody say hallelujah to Pastor Brian. I'm, I'm so excited Best Friend Day is back. So you need time off, and you need to take vacations. Listen, you need to take vacations. Take great vacations. Vacation like you're a millionaire. Come on, now, you have my permission. Vacation like you're a millionaire. Take great vacations. Take a day off. But then when you come back, you jump right back in and run and say, listen, I'm picking back up right where I left off. You see what that is? Listen to what that is. That's a pit stop. That's all that is. I'm just going to pull over for a minute. I'm just going to refuel. I'm going to get some new tires. Someone's going to wipe the screen. And I'm just going to get right back in the race. Amen. Have you seen those NASCAR drivers when they take a pit stop? They're sitting there with the hand on the wheel saying, somebody get me back in the game. Come on. Come on. Put the tires on this thing. Come on. Get that fuel in the tank. I'm ready to get back in. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you right now. I'm looking for people. I believe God is looking for people who are ready to jump in and say, listen, I'm not only going to not slow down, I'm going to accelerate. Accelerate. Run, run, run. I got into an argument one time. My wife and I were having dinner with a couple. They were both personal trainers. And so I got in an argument with the woman. I was telling her that I was about 40 years old, and I said that I I started working out again, and my knee was bothering me, so I quit. Here's what she said. She said, well, your knee's bothering you because you stopped working out. I said, no, no. No, my knee's bothering me because I started to work out. I was working out. My knee started bothering me, and so I quit. She said, no, 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 no. You stopped working out. So that's why your knee's bothering you. I'm like, you got it all backwards, sister. My knee is bothering me because I put some weight on it. She said, the reason why it's bothering you is for so long you hadn't put weight on it. And she said, what you need to do is push through the pain. You need to push through and endure. You need to lift the weight. And let me tell you what's going to happen is strength's going to come into that knee, and it's going to get stronger, and the pain is going to begin to dissipate. It's going to get smaller, and you're going to be able to do more than you've ever done before because you pushed through. Hallelujah. You pushed through. And I'm just wondering if tonight at New Harvest there's some people that go, yeah, I felt some pain. I felt some discomfort. Yeah, I have to leave my house. I have to walk away from the TV. I have to walk away from some things that I like. But I know this. If I push through the discomfort, if I push through the pain, if I endure, listen, strength is going to come because the Bible says this. When I wait on God, I'll run and not be weary. Listen, the Holy Spirit's able to quicken my mortal body. I was built for this. I was made for this. So I am. I'm going to run. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say run. 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 You can't quit. I said you can't quit. There is no quitting place. Runners, listen, only get a second wind. While they're running, it kicks in. While you're running, it just, it just begins to come up on the inside of you. When you feel like, listen, I don't know if I can go anymore. All of a sudden, something happens to your body. The oxygen begins to regulate. The oxygen becomes to the muscles. And you just feel this second wind begin to kick in. Let me tell you, that's what has happened spiritually, I believe, to people. They feel this second wind begin to kick in. And they say, you know what? I can't quit. I cannot give up. There is no stop. There is no retirement. Listen to me, church. Retirement is not a biblical concept. It's not in the Bible. There's no such thing as retire. Now, listen, I've got two shows on TV that I watch. Since Downton Abbey's been canceled and is no more, then then I only got two now. All right? 
I know Clewiston may not be a big fans of Downton Abbey, but I like Downton Abbey. And so Downton Abbey's over. That ended. So I watched two channels and two channels only. HGTV and, of course, the Food Network. Come on now. Because I like to dream about people remodeling my home. I want to be Chip Gaines. That's who I really want to be. He's my hero. Come on now. Any Fixer Upper fans in the house? So I want to be Chip Gaines. And then who doesn't watch the Food Network? All of us watch the Food Network for obvious reasons. Come on. So I watch these two channels, and on HGTV, there's these shows that come on called Caribbean Life. Caribbean Life, Mexico Life, Hawaii Life, whatever life is better than the life you've got now, that's the life they're trying to show you. It might as well be called Better Than You Life. So I watch the Caribbean Life, or I watch Mexico Life, Hawaii Life, I watch these shows, and I try to get my wife to watch it with me, and she don't like HGTV. Uh, she don't like it. She watches this channel called the Hallmark Channel. I won't spend 30 seconds of my life watching no Hallmark Channel. Every movie is the same. It's got like the same people in it. I'm like, wasn't he on a movie two nights ago? He looks the same. looks like the same guy. And they're all named Brad or Tyler or something, you know. No, really good looking. So I don't watch that. I don't watch that show. I don't watch the Hallmark Channel. I only watch HGTV, and I'm watching this Caribbean Life, and I'm looking at these people, and I see these people, you know, and they're 40, 50 years old, some of them, and they go to the south. We're selling everything we got, and we're moving to an island in the Caribbean. And I go, huh, how about that? <laughs> selling everything they got, moving to an island in the Caribbean. And we're just going to snorkel, dive, and eat fresh fish all day. And I just go, huh, that's, that sounds really interesting. And I go, you know, that would be kind of fun. I like the beach. I grew up in Palm Beach County. I love the beach. We try to go all the time to the beach. And so I thought, man, that would be kind of interesting to have a little house in the Caribbean with a little hammock, eating little pineapple drinks. Come on now, non-alcoholic pineapple drinks. Come on, we're saved. So we're drinking little non-alcoholic pineapple drinks, and we're just living on a hammock, and we're just spending all of our life like that. And then I thought to myself, you know, that'd get kind of old. I said, you know what, that sounds like a great vacation, but it sounds like a terrible life. That's just a great vacation. I want to go there and vacation, all right? But I don't want to live there. God's called me to live here. God's got things for me to do here. God's called me to Palm Beach County. And listen, while there's still breath in my body, I'm going to do what God's called me to do. God didn't call me to pick my feet up and lay in some hammock for the rest of my life. God called me to run a race. And to the best of my ability, I'm going to run as fast as I could run. I'm going to pick up the pace. I'm going to accelerate. I just need to know, come on now, who is with me saying, I am going to run. I'm going to run. I'm going to run. Hallelujah. Listen, when I'm done preaching, I told my church this, when I'm done preaching, I'm starting a prayer ministry at the church. Because one day I'll be done. I don't know when that'll be. They'll tell me. I imagine they'll tell me. Pastor, you're done. You are so done. So I thought, I'm going to start a prayer ministry to pray for the new pastor because he's going to need it. Because I've been there. So I'm going to start a prayer ministry. And I've just decided they're going to have to carry me out of that church feet first. You hear me now? They're going to have to carry me out feet first. Because I'm not retiring. I'm not giving up. I'm not just going to say, hey, I'm just going to quit. Listen, I believe this. If there's still breath in our body, God is not done with us. Hallelujah. He's not done with us. Amen. Listen, if you just look. Listen to me, church. Look at the parable of the talents. The reward for increase and in work is more work. I'm going to try that again. I said, look at the parable of the talents. The reward for work is more work. 
We think, oh, listen, enter into the joy of the Lord where you get to sit on a cloud and, and, and just play a harp and somebody's going to feed you grapes all day. That's not heaven. I got news for you. Listen, heaven is ruling and reigning. Listen, that's more activity. That's more running. Listen, when you're done running here, you're going to be running up there. Hallelujah. So I might as well get used to it down here. I might as well say I'm going to give it everything that I've got because I want to leave this earth thoroughly used up. I want to give it all that I've got. I want nothing left. I wanted to say, hey, this guy, he gave it everything. Hallelujah. He gave it everything. I was just in a meeting the other day with evangelist Reinhard Bunke. Just on Tuesday of last week, he met with some pastors. I was up at Fort Pierce and he came into the room and he's I think 78 years old. He said something, man. It got me so fired up, Pastor Chuck. He said something. He said, somebody asked me, somebody asked me, how after all these years of ministry do you keep the fire burning? And he said, listen, I don't keep the Holy Spirit burning. The Holy Spirit keeps me burning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Boy, I got that deep down on the inside of me. I said, listen, I don't have to run in my own strength. I don't have to run in my own mind. Listen, I can just rely on the Holy Spirit. I can just say, God, I need your power. I need your strength. I need you to come into this body. Listen, this body may be tired, but I know that you're able to just breathe new life in me again. Hallelujah. I'm able to breathe in me again. And if you're here today, listen, and you are tired. And you feel worn out. Listen, we're going to pray for you tonight because I believe that God is going to breathe new life in you again. Let me tell you, I don't care how old you are, how young you are. Listen, take your time off. Go on vacation. Spend time with the grandkids. And all the grandparents said, hallelujah. Spend some time with the grandkids. But listen, you keep your hand on the plow. You keep your running shoes on. Don't you trade them in for sandals. Come on, don't you trade them in for something more comfortable. You say, listen, I'm going to keep my running shoes on because as long as there's breath in my body, God's got something for me to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody could come to the piano tonight. I want to speak first to the young people. Because here's my prayer. I've got a 20-year-old son. I've got a 17-year-old daughter. And I've got a 7-year-old. My prayer for them is this. Do more. Just do more. Do more. Dream bigger than I've ever dreamed. Go to countries I never got to go to. I spent too much time wasted. Too much time I spent wasted. Don't waste the time that I wasted. Accelerate. Pick up the pace. Don't wait. I ask every young person to stand in this place. Stand to your feet. Mm. Oh, man, I tell you, I feel the Holy Ghost. Yeah, somebody said, what do you mean by young? Well, if you think you are, go, jump up. Come on now. <laughs> Some of y'all don't know, huh? Oh, no, no, no. I believe that God renews our youth. Isn't that what the Bible says? It says when we wait on him, he renews our youth. And then we do what? Run and not grow weary. Hallelujah. Psalmist said this, by my God, I'll run through a troop. By my God, I'll leap over a wall. Listen to me. I'm going to ask Pastor Chuck to just stand, if you would, Pastor Chuck. I want you to look at Pastor Chuck. In fact, Pastor Ken, if you'd join him. So many ladies here today. Would you look at me for just a moment? I started very young. All I ever wanted to do was preach the gospel. I never had a plan B. There was no plan B for me. That was it. At a young age, eight years old, I got saved. 
I used to sneak up my pastor's stage and pretend that I was preaching. Sneak up on the pulpit. Kids weren't allowed on the pulpit. Oh, no, 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 you weren't allowed on there. But I would sneak up, get behind his wooden pulpit, eight, nine years old, pretend that I was preaching. Pastoring is all I ever wanted to do. Ministry is all I ever wanted to do. At night, I would go out in the backyard of my house. I would sit by a tree and I would just pray for hours. Now, I made so many mistakes. Listen to me very carefully. If I could have everyone's attention, watch me. Do something for me. And I know this is Pastor Chuck and Pastor Karen's heart. I know they would agree with me 100%. Listen to me. Outrun us. Outrun us. Do more than we've ever done. Go places. Write books. Write songs. Lay hands on people. Go to countries. Stand. Fill stadiums. Outrun us. Listen, this man and this woman set an incredible pace. They do. They're heroes of mine. But I know that they would say the exact same thing. Outrun them. You can do it. Let me tell you, they'll be your biggest fans. Outrun Pastor Gatlin. Outrun him. Outrun myself. Outrun me. Okay? Do more. It's not impossible. You start right now. You start now. Hallelujah. Would everyone join Stan in these tonight? I have a word I believe for this church that I, I got this afternoon that I thought, God, is that really okay? I, I'm going to share it. I, but I, I believe it's for this church. I'm going to share it in just a moment. Maybe tonight you walked into this place and you came in tired. And maybe even thinking you're on the verge of being burnt out. Maybe that's crossed your mind. Listen to me, listen to me. It's really just discouragement. Because I know men of God, Pastor Chuck and I, we have the same spiritual father. Watch Bishop's pace. It's incredible. The pace that he keeps is incredible. How does he do it? Huh? Because if you could ever be burnt out, he'd have been burnt out decades ago. The pace that he keeps is incredible. So it is possible. Now, has he ever been discouraged? I'm sure he has. Has Pastor Chuck, Pastor Ken ever been discouraged? I'm sure they have. I've been discouraged many times. But we need to recognize it for what it is. That's just the enemy trying to get me to draw back. You see? That's just the enemy trying to get me to draw back. And instead of drawing back, I need to say, no, no, no. No, the kingdom of God is different. You bless those who curse. Come on now. The way up is really down. You want to find your life? You got to lose it. Listen, and if you want that second wind, you don't slow down to get it. You accelerate the pace to get that second wind. Come on now. That's the kingdom of God. That's what the kingdom of God is like. So if you're here tonight, you say, Pastor, I need a second wind. I want you to come up to this altar right now. Just come up and say, listen, I- I'm tired, but I just feel like God's speaking in my life. Right now, tonight, I'm going to pick up the pace. You come on down right now. I want to pray for you tonight. You just come on down. I want to pick up the pace. I want to pick up the pace. God's speaking to me. It's time to pick up the pace. It's time to pick up the pace. I feel like there's more. I feel like there's more. I feel like there's more. Yeah, come on. Any age. Come on. You come up. You come up and say, yeah, that's me tonight. Oh, hallelujah. There's more, there's more. Run and shoes. Run and shoes. Run and shoes. Oh, I need to trade these sandals in for something that'll get me there a little faster. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Now, would you lift your hands? Come on, let's worship the Lord tonight. Oh, let's worship Him.
Hallelujah. Now listen to me. I want to share one more scripture, and I'm just going to quote it to you. It's from the book of Habakkuk. Listen to this. Listen to this. Habakkuk chapter 2. There's a prophet by the name of Habakkuk, and here's what he said. Verse 1, he said, I am going to set myself up. I love that. I'm going to set myself up. He set himself up. In other words, I'm going to position myself. He said, and I am going to watch, now watch this, to see what he will say. In other words, I'm going to open my spiritual eyes to see what he says to my spiritual ears. Did you hear me now? I said, I'm going to open my spiritual eyes to see what he says to my spiritual ears. I'm going to see what he says. And then how I am going to respond. And then the words that are going to come out of my mouth. And God said, write the vision, make it plain, so that whoever reads it may run with it. Listen, if you want to find that second wind, you close your natural eyes. You close your natural ears. And you hear what he says. And then you say what he says. And you write down what God is saying. Watch this. And you take off. You take off. The last few weeks, God has been speaking to me. I feel like in ways that I haven't heard him, it feels like in years. It's just been like an outpouring. And I've been closing my natural eyes, closing my natural ears, going, God, like never before, I need to hear your voice. And I need to say what you're saying so that I can run. I can run. Because discouragement comes to everybody. It comes to everybody. It comes when you don't want it to come. It comes to every person on every level, every pastor, every spiritual leader, every baby Christian, discouragement comes. But I've determined in my life I will press through the discouragement. I will not slow down. No, I will speed up. Would you do this tonight? Close your eyes for just a minute. Close your eyes. I can't give you a vision. No pastor can. We love you. We want the best for you. You've got the greatest pastors in Pastor Chuck and Pastor Karen. They care for your soul. They love you. They'll see you through good times, tough times. They will say themselves, they can't give you a vision. You have to set yourself up. You have to set yourself up. And you have to say, okay, God, I want to see what you're saying to me. Because I see some people in this room. And it's like I can see discouragement. I can see fear. I can see distraction. I can see that there's another gear, but you don't know how to find it because you're so distracted by all the stuff. So today we break off discouragement. We break off distraction. We break off fear in Jesus' name. And the Holy Spirit is speaking, speaking, speaking. Listen, 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 listen. Speaking. Where's Dakota? Is Dakota here? Dakota, are you here? He's on the camera. Dakota, I've known you for a long time. But I hear the Holy Spirit saying you're a pace setter. That's right. You're a pace setter. You're setting the pace. And others are going to follow your lead. And the devil's going to try to come and say, listen, it's okay to slow down. 
But I'm here to tell you that others are watching you and you are a pace setter. And God is going to use you to do incredible things, to go where others have not gone. Gone. You're going to go into fields. You're going to go into areas. You're going to go into arenas that nobody in this room has gone into. God is setting you up. God is speaking to you in the midnight hour. I see you as a pace setter. I say this. Listen, outrun us, Dakota. Outrun us. Outrun us. Do more, do more, do more. Hallelujah. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Would you join hands with somebody next to you? Just join hands with somebody next to you. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes what we just need is a little bit of fire in our belly talked about those NASCAR drivers how even while they're at the pit stop getting fueled up and getting tires on their hands are on the wheel and they just can't wait to get back into the race I've seen them get angry I've seen them hit the steering wheel I've seen them start to yell because somebody's slowing them down and they're afraid they're going to get left behind And so they're like so antsy to get back in the race. You know what that is? That's called passion. You say, well, I'm just not a low, I'm just not a high energy person. Oh, listen, there's no such thing as low energy, high energy. There's just high passion and low passion. So what we need is some fire to get lit on the inside of us, some passion to burn on the inside of us. And if you haven't been running, you just need a reason to run. Come on, somebody just needs a reason to run in this place. Listen, young people, you need a reason to run. You need a reason to run. Let me tell you, when I was very young, I found a reason to run. I said, I refuse to live my life in ordinary. I refuse to just be another person. I refuse to just live my life like everybody else. Listen, it was too boring for me. I have to do something different with my life. I found a passion and a reason to run. That's you tonight. That's you tonight. Listen, let me just pray for the fire to be lit on the inside of you. Oh, I see it. I see it. I see it. I see it. Father, in Jesus' name, oh, I declare fire lit on the inside of us. Fire lit on the inside of us. Fire lit on the inside of us. Oh, come on, now take those hands and just put them on your stomach right now and just say, listen, I need the fire of God rising up inside of me. Jesus' name. I want to pray for you tonight. Can I pray for you tonight? Can I pray for you tonight? Would you come here? I don't know who you are. I don't know your name. I see things breaking off of you. I see things breaking off of you. I just hear the Holy Spirit saying to me that the devil has tried to discourage you with, watch this, missed opportunities things you wish you would have done. It's not necessarily the things that you did that the devil tries to remind you of. He tries to remind you of the things you didn't do. Some family issues, some family situation. Tonight, I declare that's broken off of your life. Listen to me, listen to me. The best is yet to come for you. God is not done with you. The best is yet to come for you. Can I pray for you tonight? Father, lay my hands on the sister tonight. The best is yet to come. Listen to me. Not just years. Decades are ahead of you. Decades are ahead of you. Listen. You run to your destiny. And you forget your history. You move forward. And you will automatically leave your past behind. I declare chains of the past are broken. Memories supernaturally erased in Jesus' name. 
I declare joy coming once again. She's not running in tears. She's running with joy, passion. I declare there's a new fire on the inside of her. There's giftings and talents and abilities that God has put on the inside of you that you have yet to tap into. And I say, fire, passion, rise up in Jesus' name. Tonight's your night. This is your year. Hallelujah. You say, well, no, 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 it's already September. It hasn't been my year. I'm saying this is your year. It's your year. Hallelujah. It's your year. Hallelujah. It's your year. Hallelujah. Pastor Chuck, Pastor Karen, I hear Holy Spirit speaking over you tonight. I always wanted, like I said, a brother. I've had great mentors in my life, some great men. I've had very few brothers, very few non negotiable, come on, friends. But when I was preparing this message, I thought of you guys, and I thought, this is them. That new harvest is to accelerate the pace. That I would speak over this church and say, what used to take 10 years will no longer take 10 years. It will now take 10 months. And what used to take 10 months... Come on, this isn't the first time you've heard this before. What used to take 10 months will now take 10 weeks. And what used to take 10 weeks will take 10 days. Oh, listen to me. What used to take 10 days will happen in less than one day. God is saying it's time to run, to run, to run, to run. Woo, hallelujah. And I hear the Holy Spirit saying... And this was the word that I got. I said, God, you want me to share this? I'll share it if you want me to. I said, but then you got to remind me. you got to push it on the inside of me. you got to make me say it, God. you got to give it to me so hard. I see you signing financial transactions for this church. Financial transactions. I don't know if there's any in the works or if there's any out there somewhere, but I see financial transactions coming to this church that's going to increase this church, not through addition, but through multiplication. Multiplication. And it's going to take not just a leap, but quantitative leaps, supernatural leaps that could never happen in the natural. Listen, not just a good deal, a incredible miracle miraculous transactions. I see it happening in New Harvest Church that God is accelerating the pace. Come on, can we give God praise? Can we lift up a shout of praise for that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's like you guys, yeah, you're, you're just at the midway point yourselves. You're just now beginning to lengthen your stride. Oh, come on now. You know God's put so much more inside of you, and it's like you don't even know who to share it to, who to share it with, or, or where to share it. There's so much more. But listen, God has so many more years and decades ahead for you as well. I just hear the Holy Spirit saying, yeah, it's time to accelerate. He'll still give you that time to have with the grandkids. He's still going to give you those days off. He's still going to give you time to just take that pit stop, get some new tires, get some fresh fuel. But then you're like at the steering wheel saying, I need to get back to New Harvest. I need to get back to Seatown. I need to get back to Cluiston because I've got a race to run. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God praise. Come on, lift up a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
I'm done, but I, I just got to look these young people in the eye. One more time, Pastor Chuck, if you'd come. I meant it when I said it earlier. And it's just like I got to ask that question once in a while. If you'd come up with you, here with me, Pastor Chuck. I've heard Pastor Chuck's stories. I'm telling you, they're wild. You understand? <laughs> like I said, I get around him sometimes to, to feel a little bit better about myself, some of the things I went through. But I'm telling you, he'll look you in the eye, and I'll look you in the eye today. Outrun us. Outrun us. Look, who is going to outrun us? He sets an incredible pace. But somebody here, maybe five, maybe 10, maybe 20, they're going to outrun us. They're going to do more than we've ever done before. I can't wait. And listen, all of heaven is cheering you on. And we're cheering you on. You can do it. Pick up the pace. Pastor Chuck. God bless you. Thank you so much. Amen. Woo. Wow. I don't know about y'all, but I think we had a word from the Lord tonight. Let me uh, just, just, just remain right where you are. You don't have to move yet. Let me just help the moment out just for a moment. Pastor Brian has no idea. I mean, we didn't even talk. He'd been in Maine preaching. We haven't even talked the whole week, the last three weeks. We set the date, and we haven't talked. We haven't talked. We haven't said nothing. I mean, he ain't even hit like on Facebook with me. He ain't, ain't done nothing. It's like he, he's gone off the radar. But what some of you may not know, and I know he don't know, three weeks ago, right here on a Tuesday night prayer meeting, God began to speak to me that we're about to catch our second win. We started praying that. Y'all remember that? We, we were praying that. I said, God's given us our second win, and we started prophesying it. We were right here at prayer meeting on Tuesday night, right here. And, and then the next week, I preached on running with the horses. I'm telling you, if God has ever confirmed anything, in this house, he brought a pastor that knew nothing of what was going on here and walked up into this pulpit and delivered, thus saith the Lord, spoke a word over this house, over our lives, pick up the pace. Man, I heard that. I heard that. And what you don't know, just last night, in prayer meeting, we begin to pray about financial things that would begin to happen rapidly, exponentially. Sue, Sue gave me a word after a word last night because I said something last night that I've never said in the history of my life, ever. I heard the Lord say that somebody was going to write a check for a million dollars this house and Sue I told Sue I said Sue I've never said nothing like that Sue said the Lord put it in you to say it so that we could hear it and then you get up here and you start talking about financial transactions stuff that would take 10 months will now just take 10 weeks and pushing that thing down to one day can I just tell you something God's prophetically saying something over this house right here in this particular time my goodness. I don't know if you know the spiritual implication of what's being done right here in this house. God is doing some marvelous things, and somebody is about to catch their second wind because you're about to run the distance. You're about to fulfill what God has put on the inside of you. Wow. Mm. Woo. Man, I could throw this mic and run right now. That's what I feel like doing. I could do it. My Lord, I could do it. Pastor Brian, thank you. Thank you for delivering the word. Wow. I know, I, I know he, he thinks I'm older than he is. And 
I might be by a couple of months. I don't know. But if he's going to call it like that, I'm going to call it like this. My little brother can preach, can't he? My little brother can preach. My Lord. My Lord, he can preach. Come on, let's give God praise for a word up in this house. on somebody real good and tell them you got to run and you got to run strong and you got to run hard. Come on, push on them real good. Tell them you got to run. Tell them you got to run. Come on, find somebody that don't want to say nothing and say you got to run too. You got to run up in this house. Yeah. 